हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू द अमेजिंग प्लेटफॉर्म ऑफ फिजिक्स वाला व्हिच इज पी डब्ल्यू इंग्लिश चैनल माय डियर स्टूडेंट्स आई होप यू ऑल हैव स्टडीड ऑर्गेनिक केमिस्ट्री एंड नाउ ऑल ऑफ यू आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द फिजिकल केमिस्ट्री सो वेलकम टू द नेक्स्ट सेशन ऑफ केमिस्ट्री व्हिच इज योर फिजिकल केमिस्ट्री लेट मी टेल यू फिजिकल केमिस्ट्री इज सुपर इंटरेस्टिंग एंड इट इज वन पार्ट ऑफ केमिस्ट्री व्हिच इज एक्चुअली कनेक्टेड टू द वर्ल्ड व्हाट एवर इज हैपनिंग ऑल around you you can actually relate the concepts which we will be discussing here in your day to day life basically so this is going to be amazing whenever i'll teach you a concept i assure you that you'll see that uh, application of that particular concept all around you and then you will be super fascinated so my dear students physical chemistry is such an amazing part of chemistry which you can never neglect okay so first thing is this and the other thing is a lot of students actually thinks that ma'am physical chemistry is all about you know uh, solving numericals so we only have to just uh, memorize a, a formula and then we'll have to solve the questions right yes and that is the boring part ma'am no my dear students physical chemistry is super interesting and uh, let me tell you that whoever thinks that it is only about numericals is absolutely wrong physical chemistry is actually about the theory and its application so i am going to teach you like that only we'll be discussing a particular topic thoroughly its theory we'll discuss its concepts we'll discuss and then we'll discuss its applications how conceptual questions are asked in je or neat if we talk about the je or neat uh, most of the focus is actually on the tricky concept parts right yes and that tricky concept part is going to be discussed thoroughly okay also we are going to solve a lot of numericals which will also be a interesting part again so what you have to do is you will have to make another notebook for physical chemistry of course and my dear students you just focus and whatever i am telling you do that and let me ensure you that you are going to be in love with physical chemistry at the end let me assure you that okay okay so i am super excited for this new journey how are you are you excited or not just let me know in the comment section okay so now my dear students let's discuss about the chapter which we are going to discuss we are going to discuss solutions chapter solutions means uh, liquid my i mean i think most of the students what think about solutions is i'm liquid yeah my dear students and uh, we'll be talking about various types of solutions various types of solutions now solutions can be n number of types so we are going to discuss each and every part of solution so uh, i hope you all are super excited like me so let's start this session okay so what are we going to discuss first we'll be starting from a very basic level and then we'll go to the higher level always always and always uh, keep this in your mind never ever try to just jump on the uh highest part always study from the base if your foundation is strong if your foundation is strong your building is going going to be very strong right yes but if the foundation is not strong how high your building could be it will collapse so always focus on that so we are going to focus on that part very seriously okay so what are we going to discuss today we are going to discuss about what is a solution why are we discussing about solutions right so what is a solution next we are going to discuss about different types of solutions what are the different types of solutions and then we are going to discuss about the concentration terms which is a very important part because actually you have discussed this part in mole concept also this means that you are Uh, actually studying the same part in two different chapters so can you just understand that how important it this is for chemistry this is of utmost importance so we are going to discuss about this very thoroughly okay so now let's start the session my dear students first and the most important thing since since we are discussing about solutions so we need to know about matter right so i'll i just need a definition from you all which you might have studied in 9th and 10th classes right what is matter what is matter and the basic definition which would have came to your mind is ma'am matter anything that occupies space and has mass is matter right and this definition is absolutely correct so let's write it first anything just a second yeah anything that has mass and occupies 
space is matter okay so anything that occupies space and has mass is matter okay so now let's take examples of matter okay uh, you're sitting in a room yes ma'am you uh, for sure i am assuming that you might have a pencil or a pen my dear students yes i have this pen so is this matter or not does this sp uh, occupy some space yes ma'am does this has some mass yes ma'am so it is matter okay now if i talk about if i talk about this bottle this bottle yeah yes ma'am uh, the water inside this bottle does it occupy some space yes it is occupying space does this have some mass yes it has mass so it is also matter uh, okay what all your notebook your notebook my dear students does your notebook occupy space yes ma'am does this has mass does it has mass yes ma'am it occupies space and has mass so it is matter in fact each and everything around you is matter because it is occupying space and it has mass okay now 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 let's talk about the air around us the air around us does that occupy space does that that has mass yes you will say no ma'am no ma'am i can move here i can move here this means that air is not occupying space right because i can take air's space so now let's discuss about that uh, how can you prove that air actually occupies space uh, just take a just take a bowl of water just take a bowl of water or take a bucket of water okay and you have that uh, container with which you uh, hold the water that uh, uh, in hindi we generally call it a uh, mug okay so what do you call what we call in english i don't have that word for uh, here but i hope you've understood that bucket and a mug right yeah so you take a empty mug you take a bucket full of water now you know that the mug has air inside it now uh, try to push it in the perpendicular direction inside the bucket full of water if you will try doing that it will not go down you will have to apply a lot of pressure a lot of force but it will not go down why because the air inside the the air inside the mug is actually not allowing water to go inside it because it is actually occupying space once you will tilt it a little you will see bubbles coming around that is what air which was trapped in the which was trapped in the mug and is coming out this means that ma'am air actually occupies space right so you can see that air is actually occupying space so it is also matter okay so now we are crystal clear with the concept of matter the next uh, thing that comes to my mind is how many different forms of matter are there why because i give you an example of pen which was something very solid i give you an example of water which was very flowy right yes and i give you a uh, example of air which we cannot see right yes it has it it is more flowy than even water so my dear students matter has different states matter has different states we are basically going to discuss only three states there are many other states as well but you have in your syllabus only three states so now we are going to write the different states of matter matter can exist as matter can exist as it can exist as solid liquid and gas right yes these three are actually the your main uh, topics to be discussed there are many other forms as well i'm not denying that but i'm not denying that but you only have to study these three types okay yes perfect now now next word i want to ask you all is if i say a word which is h2o if i say a word that is h2o okay so now ma'am is saying you a word which is h2o what comes to your mind what comes to your mind if ma'am is saying h2o what is striking to your mind right ma'am h2o means drinking water right yeah the water which we drink ma'am it is h2o so water what state is h2o you will say ma'am h2o is in liquid state right yes now my dear students here you have to correct yourself because this is the generalized uh, thing which we 
uh, we feel right that it is correct but it is actually not correct why because h2o h2o is actually a molecule h2o is actually a molecule it is not it is not defining a particular state it is only telling you that h2o is telling you that it is a molecules it can exist in all the three states that means that every molecule in the universe can exist in all the three different states h2o is can be present as in gaseous state which we call as vapors we call as water vapors there are water vapors yes ma'am that is the gaseous state of h2o right so i'll write water vapor next my dear students it can exist as solid state it can exist as solid state as well solid ice ice is also water h2o right yes so the here it will be ice and it can exist as liquid state and it can exist as liquid state example of liquid state ma'am water which we drink drinking water right so i can say that it is drinking water so in this way we can say that every every molecule can exist in all the three different states right it can exist in all the three different states but at a particular temperature and pressure some particular states are defined why are they defined now we have to discuss about that so if this answer is clear so now my next question would be now my next question would be why why some things exist as solids why some things exist as liquid and why some things exist as gaseous state right yes so what are the factors that actually define a particular state what are the different factors now we are going to discuss about those particular factors okay so now let's discuss about those particular factors okay yeah so now we'll be discussing about what actually what actually determines a particular state whether a molecule will exist as solid whether a molecule will exist as liquid or whether it will exist as gas right so now my dear students we can say that state is actually a function it is actually a function of two major things what are those ma two major things it is a function of temperature it is a function of temperature and it is a function of force of attraction force of attraction i'll be writing temperature as t and force of attraction as f o a okay yeah so any state be it solid liquid or gas it actually depends on two factors which is temperature and not temperature basically it's it is thermal energy i'm sorry i'm sorry it is a it is thermal energy i'll just tell you it is thermal energy let's define it as te okay okay so now function uh, any state is actually a function of two different force uh, two different forces one form of that is thermal energy and the other form is force of attraction okay so now so now let's understand this every molecule has both of these energies present every molecule has both of these energies present in some molecules one particular form of energy dominates over the other and since one form dominates over the other that actually determines that whether a molecule will exist as a solid or a liquid or a gas okay i hope this is crystal clear now let's discuss about why a particular thing is a solid and why a particular thing is gaseous or a uh, liquid state okay yeah so now first and the most important thing is when will thermal energy increase when will thermal energy increase ma'am thermal energy actually depends on temperature that is the reason i wrote here temperature because thermal you can understand the word thermal means something related to temperature so thermal energy actually depends on temperature so first we'll write that thermal energy depends on temperature it depends on temperature okay if you have very high temperature you if you have very high temperature then thermal energy will dominate over the force of attraction okay because thermal energy will increase with increase in temperature your thermal energy also 
increases and once your thermal energy increases what happens is when thermal energy increases the particles actually tend to move randomly away from each other because they have a very high thermal energy so when thermal energy is more actually your particles tend to move away in a random motion and that is how it happens okay now let's talk about the next part which is your force of attraction so now my dear students force of attraction depends your force of attraction actually depends on pressure so the force of attraction actually depends on pressure if you increase the pressure if you increase the pressure your force of attraction would increase so what we can say that if we increase the pressure the force of attraction would increase okay now imagine this if you increase the pressure force of attraction will increase if these are the two molecules and their force of attraction is increasing what will happen they'll tend to move closer to each other right they'll tend to move closer to each other yes ma'am so my dear students what we can say that when pressure is increased the molecules when pressure is increased the molecules or the particles tend to come closer to each other okay now these forces these two energies actually determine which state of a particular molecule will exist okay now let's talk about now let's talk about the different forms right if i talk about if i talk about the solid state so now my dear students when does a particular molecule or a particle or a, when does a particular molecule exist in the solid state solids in solid state all the particles are very close to each other they don't have a random motion right yes this means that particles have a very strong force of attraction so i can say that solid state will only exist when your force of attraction will dominate over the thermal energy that is the particles will have a more of the force of attraction as compared to the thermal energy and that is the reason particles will stay close to each other and you will get a solid state okay clear yes now let's talk about the other state which is your liquid state in liquid state my dear students what happens is that you have you have your thermal energy nearly close to a little more but nearly equal to your force of attraction so here there is no very uh, very uh, deep uh, predominance here it is that only thermal energy is a little more than the force of attraction but we can say that it is nearly equal so both of them are nearly equal to each other and that is the reason a liquid state exists in a molecule now if a molecule now if a molecule has gaseous state now if a molecule has gaseous state what will happen you know that particles are moving randomly particles are moving randomly in gaseous state yes ma'am there are no force uh, there is not a very uh, strong force of attraction between the molecules if that would be then the particles would stick closer to each other right yes that is the reason we can say that in gaseous state actually the thermal energy dominates over the force of attraction in gaseous state thermal en energy actually dominates over the force of attraction right i hope nothing uh, there is no uh, doubt here because this was very uh, basic thing which we wanted to discuss which i wanted to discuss basically okay so yeah i hope this is crystal clear now let's move forward now let's move forward to the next part now let's move forward to the next part which is that you have a table here you have a table here you have mass given shape given and volume given you have been given different states you have to just write that where a particular thing is fixed and where a particular thing is not constant okay so you'll have to write constant and not constant okay yeah so now if we talk about mass if a particular thing is a matter then it will have mass of its own and that would be a constant value that would not change right yes ma'am because every matter has its own particular mass and it occupies a particular space so i can say that mass will be constant for all this will be constant here this will be constant here and this will be constant here no issues a gas will have its fixed mass a liquid has will, will have its uh, fixed mass and a solid will have its fixed mass now let's talk about the shape 
what about shape which of the following will have a constant or a fixed shape and which of the following will not have a constant or a fixed shape okay so if we talk about a solid a solid has a fixed shape right yes so i can write it as fixed yes liquid has a fixed shape no my dear students liquid does not have a fixed shape if i have this bottle of water now if i take this bottle and i pour this water in a glass <laughs> sorry so if i pour this water in a glass what will happen the glass uh, the uh, liquid will uh, occupy uh, will actually uh, retain or it would what would be what would we say what will be the word it will actually take the shape of the glass right yes that means that the shape of liquid is not fixed that means that the shape of the liquid is not fixed so i can write that not fixed and if we talk about gas gas shape is also not fixed if you take all the gas in this room and uh, try to move it to a very small container of a very weird shape it will take the shape of that container as well right that means that it takes the shape of the container so i can say that gas shape is also not fixed okay now let's talk about the volume now let's talk about the volume okay does a solid has a fixed volume yes ma'am a solid has a fixed volume right yes so we can say that this is fixed does a liquid have a fixed volume yes that is true if you have let us say 500 ml of water you will if you will pour it into some other container the volume would still remain 500 ml only right yes the volume won't change so ma'am the volume of the liquid is fixed so we'll write that this is fixed and if you talk about gas ma'am gas volume is not fixed it is not fixed right yes it takes the volume of the container whichever container you pour the gas in the gas will take its shape right uh, uh, its shape so i can say that sorry the gas will take its volume right if you take a gas and uh, put it into a 2 liter container the volume of the gas would be 2 liter if you take the gas and pour it into a 5 uh, liter container the volume would be 5 liter right yes so this is not fixed in fact you know that gas ha has a has infinite expandability a gas has infinite expandability it takes the shape of any container you pour it into in any container it will take the shape and the volume as well right yes so i can say that we can write this also that gas has in finite expandability it has infinite expandability okay i hope this is crystal clear yeah so you can write it i'll just have some water and then we'll move forward okay so now so now my question to you is now my question to you is why why some state has a fixed volume and a fixed uh, shape but some uh, state doesn't what is the reason behind it now we are going to discuss about that why in some cases uh, volume and shape is fixed why in some cases volume is fixed but shape is, isn't fixed or vice versa right yes so now we are going to discuss about that and how are we going to discuss about that my dear students now for that you need to understand a very important thing that is you'll take a example you can consider you and your friend right let's consider a person one and let's consider a person two now what happened is these two people are actually standing together okay once uh, i hope you've played that game right statue yeah you've played that game right statue so these two friends were standing here these two friends were standing here and i said statue so now my dear students they both they both cannot change their positions they cannot if they are standing here if he is standing here and he is standing here they both cannot change their positions and these positions are actually known as their mean positions and the distance between these two let us say it is a a distance it is also 
fixed it is also fixed right yes so what can i say that what can i say that here the mean position is also fixed also fixed and this distance is actually known as the interparticle distance what is it known as interparticle distance so i can say that mean position is also fixed and the interparticle distance is also fixed so this is the reason this is the reason a shape is fixed this is the reason a shape is fixed when is a shape fixed ma'am shape is fixed shape is fixed when there is no change in the mean position and the interparticle distance is also equal right yes so for the condition shape fix for the condition shape fixed for the condition shape fixed what is the condition that mean position of particles is fixed the mean position of the particles is fixed crystal clear there is no issue right now let's talk about the volume fixed now let's talk about the volume fixed now when is volume fixed now for volume fixed what i did what i did i gave those the, these two friends some reluctance uh, some uh, uh, i i just uh, thought that i am being very cruel to them so i'll just let them uh, do something of their own i'll i just told them that you can change your positions you can move you can move but you cannot remove your hands you cannot remove your hands this means that this means that they'll have to hold their hands together they'll have to hold their hands together right yes this means that now these can move here they can come here but but the distance still remains a the distance still remains a that means they can change their mean position they can change their mean position these two friends can go here but the distance between the two cannot change that means the mean position is not fixed now but the distance interparticle distance is fixed when this happens actually actually the volume is fixed but the shape is not fixed right yes because the mean position has changed so this is how you are going to define this is how you are going to define volume fix that that interparticle distance is fixed when your interparticle distance is fixed then when only interparticle distance is fixed but not the mean position then the volume is fixed but the shape is not fixed okay yes and if both of the things are not fixed right now these two friends decided that we will not listen to ma'am why will we listen to ma'am let's go away let's remove uh, let's not hold our hands and let's just play now if they do so then neither the position is fixed nor the interparticle distance is fixed and that is the case when neither the shape is fixed nor the volume is fixed so i hope this is clear with you this is how we can understand that why shape is fixed why volume is fixed if some day any question is asked to you regarding the volume change uh, fixed or shape fixed i hope you will answer this right yes so i'll just move aside you can write this and then we'll move forward i hope you've written it now we are going to talk about the next part which is solutions so now my dear students what is a solution what is a solution solution is actually because we are going to discuss about our chapter so i have started the solutions chapter what is solution my dear students solution is a homogeneous mixture it is a homogeneous mixture first i'll write the definition and then i'll make you understand it is a homogeneous homogeneous mixture mixture beyond the dimensions of atoms and molecules beyond the dimensions of atoms and molecules it is a homogeneous mixture beyond the dimensions of atoms and molecules of two or more than two components okay so now let's understand this this is a very scientific definition now we'll understand this okay so what does this mean is that you take a 
container and you take water in it okay so what did you do you took a container and you took water in it so this is water okay now what you did this is a pure solvent till now okay so now what you did you added some sugar into it you added some sugar into it and just mixed it now when you add sugar to your water and completely mix it can you see the sugar and water separately no, once they are mixed, ma'am, I cannot see them separately. It is a homogeneous mixture. Now, what is a homogeneous mixture, my dear students? Homogeneous mixture actually means that you take a part from this part of the solution or you take from this part or you take from this part or you take from this part. There is no difference, no difference that is a homogeneous mixture. Now, if you take sand and add that to the water okay what will happen is the sand soluble in water no ma'am it will not be soluble and you can see sand separately and water separately that is not a homogeneous mixture that is a heterogeneous mixture what is a homogeneous mixture where there is no layer formed okay it is a completely homogeneous solution whichever part you take from that solution it will be homogeneous it will be of the same composition okay that is what is known as a solution now the next line it says that it is a mixture beyond the dimensions it is a homogeneous mixture beyond the dimensions of atoms and molecules of two or more than two components now here in a sugar solution you have sugar you have water right it was a solution of two components but if i add if i add salt into the solution then and mix it ma'am still it is a solution now it has three components it has water it has sugar it has salt so this way a solution can have more than two components it should have minimum two components a uh, solution cannot be only of one component it is a minimum it has two components and maximum it can have many any number of components okay i hope this is clear please write it and then we'll move forward okay now let's move forward when we talk about the components when we talk about the components the major two parts of components i'll just make you understand that the major two parts of a component in a solution are one is known as solute and the other is known as a comp uh, solvent one is known as a solute and the other is known as a solvent now now what is a solute what is a solvent see my dear students in a solution you only classify as solute and solvent if you have different uh, n number of components then you will have to uh, distribute them in these two types only okay so now we are going to discuss about what is solvent and what is a solute when we take an example of the sugar solution you had water in a large amount okay and you had you added a very little amount of sugar so here my dear students i can say that you had water uh, you had more of water more as compared to the moles of sugar okay so now my dear students i'll say that uh, it will have two components and the water is the solvent and sugar is your solute always in a solution always in a solution the component with maximum number of moles is actually a solvent the uh, component with maximum number of moles is actually a solvent okay so you can write here that solvent has the maximum number of moles maximum number of moles among all the components among all the components okay i hope this is clear the component with the maximum number of moles will actually be called as a solvent and the other all components will be classified as a solute so from here one another note is to be made that solvent is in a solution is always one is always one and rest all components are solute so you can have n number of solutes but you will only have one solvent and which will be a solvent the component with the maximum number of moles will be a solvent okay i hope this is clear i hope this is clear very good you can write it and then we'll move forward now now my dear students depending on i'll write here here solution 
So now my dear students, depending on the number of solute and solvent, that is the total number of components, you can classify the solution as binary, tertiary, this type. So now we are going to discuss about this. Okay. So now my dear students, if you have, let us say two components, if you will have two components, that means one will be a solvent, that means one will be a solvent, which will have the more number of moles and now you had two components out of which one is a solvent the other would be a solute yes so the other would be a solute okay so one plus one two yes so this is known as binary solution why binary solution because you have two components here you have only two components here if you have three components if you have three components that means that ma'am in a three component solution i'll have one solvent because i can only have one solvent right yes so i'll have one solvent and still i had three components if one is solution then uh, solvent then the other two would be solute so i'll have two solutes here and this type of solution is known as a tertiary solution tertiary solution Okay, now I hope it, this is clear. Now let's move forward to the next part. If you have four components, what will happen? If I have four components, then one will be a solvent and the other three will be solutes. So ma'am, this type of solution is known as a quaternary solution. And you are generally asked out of these only. Okay, so now this is how you classify a solution and you identify uh, whether which type of solution is it. Now, if in a question it is not mentioned, if in a question it is not mentioned that which type of solution it is, you will consider it as a binary solution. So, you can write here that if not mentioned, if not mentioned, consider, consider a solution to be binary consider a solution to be binary the solution would be a binary solution okay until and unless it is mentioned i hope this is clear there is no issue with that perfect you can write it and then we'll move forward Now, my dear students, you can have solute and solvent, right? Now, the states of solute and solvent can be out of three. Any uh, solute can be solid liquid gas. Your solvent can be solid liquid gas. This means that there are total nine different types of solutions possible, right? Yes, there are all the possibilities here. They are written and you can go through this table. This table is important. Questions can be asked. So, you have to actually go through this particular table when you have a see when you have a gaseous solution your solvent will be gas your solvent will always be gas now your solute can be gas your solute can be liquid and your solute can be solid these are the three possibilities then again if it is a liquid solution you your solvent will be liquid again your solid solute can be of the three different states then your solvent could be a your solvent could be a solid and then your solute would be of the three types. So, total nine different types of solutions can be present there. Here are the examples which you need to memorize. I have written important here. So, go through this table, write this table. This is also available in your NCRT. So, you have to go through this, through this table. So, pause the video. You can write it and then we'll move forward. Okay. So, now let's move forward my dear students. Now. There are a few terminologies which we need to understand before starting this chapter. The first and the most important terminology is aqueous solution. If you are given aqueous solution, what does this give, uh, tell you? Actually, aqueous solution is giving you information. Actually, aqueous solution is giving you information that an aqueous solution is a solution in which your solvent is water. Always and always aqueous solution in aqueous solution, your solvent will be a water. So, right that and in an aqueous solution in an aqueous solution the solvent the solvent is always water the solvent is always water in an aqueous solution the solvent is always and always water let's take example okay what what do I want to tell you by an example? Okay. 
let's say let's say i have an aqueous solution aqueous nuh solution okay you will go through this these types of solutions you will be given aqueous naoh solution so what can you infer from this that that this is a this is a solution now nothing is mentioned you will have to consider it as a binary solution that means you will have two components one solute and one solvent now this is a binary solution okay i'll write this is a binary solution this is a binary solution first thing i have understood this the other thing that i can infer from here is that the solvent is water why because aqueous is written so the solvent is water the solvent is water so if the solvent is water and you have two components then what will be solute NaOH NaOH will be a solute so the other thing you can write is that the solute the solute is NaOH this is how you are going to you are going to infer that what all things are told to you by just one single line just one single line can give you n number of informations aqua solution of NaOH means that you have solute as NaOH you have a uh, solvent as water and it is a binary solution okay I hope this is clear you can write this and then we'll move forward yes i hope you've written it now we are going to discuss about the mole concept so now my dear students why i am teaching you mole concept because i know that you have studied mole concept in your uh, 11th class but if some student are there who who doesn't have that information complete thorough information about mole concept so the part which we are going to discuss here i need to tell you that so today we are going to first study about the mole concept okay so what does mole concept tell you the first and the most important thing is what is a mole what is a mole so my dear students one mole is just a number one mole is just a number right if somebody tells you one mole this means that 6.022 into 10 raised to the power 23 entities you have you have 6.022 into 10 raised to the power 23 this number was denoted as one mole it is also given a name which is known as avo gadro number it is also given a number name as avogadro number okay so i have written that one mole is actually equal to this number and this is actually equal to the avogadro number which is denoted by n a now imagine imagine when i when i talk to you about one dozen what do you understand one dozen means 12 one dozen means 12 one dozen banana means 12 bananas one dozen apple means 12 apples right yes similarly if i say if i tell you one mole apple you will be like 6.022 into 10 raised to the power 23 apples if i say ever uh, one mole bananas you will be like 6.022 into 10 raised to the power 23 bananas if i say uh, one mole of uh, one avogadro number of apples that also means 6.022 into 10 raised to the power 23 apples right yes so this is how you're going to study whenever one mole is given to you okay now now if you've got this now we'll be studying how we can find out how we can calculate moles right different types different forms of moles okay so the first form is moles in terms of number first we are going to discuss about moles in terms of number okay so what does this mean this means that my dear students you know that one dozen i'll give you very uh, genuine example you know that one dozen means 12 you know that one dozen means 12 if i tell you if i tell you that i have 12 bananas i have 12 bananas how many dozens do i have how many dozens do i have you will say ma'am i know that one dozen has 12 bananas and you have 12, 24 bananas this means that 24 upon 12 which is equal to 2 so ma'am you have two dozen of bananas 
you have two dozens of bananas you will be like this you will say you will tell me this yeah what did you do the number which i gave you which was 24 you divided it by the reference value the reference value was 12 which you knew that one dozen means 12 right the same formula you have to apply here you have to apply here how can you calculate mole how can you calculate number of moles whatever the number i am giving you that means a given number whatever the number i am giving you that means the given number that you have to divide by the reference value which is one mole one mole is avogadro number avogadro means 6.022 into 10 raised to the power 23 so if any time you are given, if any time you are given the number of particles and you have to calculate the moles in terms of number of particles, you just divide that number by the Avogadro number. That is the reference value. You will get the number of moles. Let's take an example and understand this. If I tell you, if I tell you, calculate, calculate number of moles of 12.044 into 10 raised to the power 23 atoms. Okay. So, you have to tell me that how many moles of atoms are present. I have given you a number. You can tell me the moles of atoms, right? What will you say, ma'am? The moles of atom would be given number which is 12.044 into 10 raised to the power 23. And I'll have to divide it by the reference value which is the Avogadro number 6.022 into 10 raised to the power 23. This will be cancelled out. This would be 1. This would be 2. So, ma'am, 2 moles of atoms are present right so what did you do you just did a simple calculation this is mole in terms of number this is mole in terms of number let's try one more question the concept would be more clear calculate calculate moles of electron calculate number of electrons in two uh, let's say three moles of electron you have been given three moles of electron you have to give tell me the number of uh, electrons what will you say what will you say that we know we know one mole electron means 6.022 into 10 raised to the power 23 electrons right now you are telling me that you have three moles of electrons so if one mole of electron has this many electrons then three mole of electrons will be equal to 3 into 6.022 into 10 raised to the power 23 which is uh, 660.18 18.066 into 10 raised to the power 23 electrons. So, 3 moles of electron means that I have 18.066 number of electrons. This is so easy my dear students. Just, just related to dozen and you will be crystal clear with the concept. Okay. I hope this is clear. You just write it and then we will move forward. Okay. I hope you have written this. Now write this and then we will move forward. I hope you have written this. Now what we are going to discuss about is that how are we going to calculate moles in terms of weight. Right. Yes. So the other part would be moles in terms of mass. Okay. So now my dear students students so my dear students a lot of times a lot of times you're given mass and you have to calculate moles how are you going to study how are you going to calculate that see for that you need to understand that what is molar mass actually my dear students molar mass is given in grams per mole okay this is the unit of molar mass and what is molar mass it is the mass of one mole that is 6.022 into 10 raised to the power 23 entity. So, if you are given, if you are given that example that you are given the molar mass, molar mass of hydrogen atom, hydrogen 
is 1 gram per mole. So, what do you infer by this is that 6.022 into 10 raised to the power 23 atoms of hydrogen weigh 1 gram. So, what we can infer from this is that 6.022 into 10 raised to the power 23 hydrogen atoms weigh 1 gram. So, this means that molar mass is not fixed for all the atoms. I mean molar mass is not same for all the atoms. Actually molar mass for every element is different. Let's take example my dear students. If I say that oxygen then oxygen's molar mass is 16 grams per mole. So my dear students 6.022 into 10 raised to the power 23 atoms of oxygen together weigh 6 grams. Similarly, if I talk about nitrogen, then 14 grams per mole is the molar mass. This means that 6.022 into 10 raised to the power 23 nitrogen atoms weigh how much? 14 grams per mole. So, this is how you study molar mass. Okay. And it is very important for you. I'll write as note, my dear students. This is a note. This is important. You need to learn molar masses of first 30 elements. You need to remember the molar masses of first 30 elements in the periodic table. There is these uh, actually the examiner uh, has the examiner expects you to know the molar masses of these elements. You will not be given in the exam paper. Okay. So once you will memorize it the story is very easy for you. So now my dear students what would be the formula of number of moles? Number of moles formula would be given mass, whatever the mass is given, right? Yes, so here it will come given mass divided by, it will be divided by the molar mass of that particular atom or molar mass of that particular molecule. So, I can write here as molar mass. I will give you example as well, molar mass. So, now ma'am will give you an example and you will be crystal clear with the concept. So, now let's study about this. If I, if I tell you that, give me, uh, give me the molar mass, give me the mass of 2 moles of hydrogen. So, if I tell you that you have to tell me the molar mass of 2 moles of, uh, sorry, the mass of 2 moles of hydrogen, then how are you going to tell me this? See, you have 2 moles of hydrogen and you know the molar mass of hydrogen. What does molar mass mean? That 1 mole of hydrogen weighs 1 gram per mole. So, this means that 1 mole of hydrogen has mass 1 gram and if you have 2 moles, then 2 moles of hydrogen will have 1 into 2 that is 2 grams mass. Easy, right? This is how you are going to use this concept. Next question, my dear students, let us say ma'am gives you a question. Ma'am gives you a question that give me, uh, tell me, tell me the number of moles in in 16 grams of helium. You have 16 grams of helium and you have to tell me the number of moles of helium. See, for this you need to, you need to know the molar mass of helium. Okay. So, you have to memorize it. Molar mass of helium is 4 grams per mole. Okay. So, I have told you but you need to memorize this that the molar mass of helium is 4 grams per mole. This means that 1 mole of helium weighs 4 grams, right? Yes. So, if you want to calculate the number of moles, then this will be equal to given mass, which is 16, divided by the molar mass, which is 4, which is equal to 4 moles of helium, right? Yes. So, this is how you will calculate the moles of different atoms. Now, what if you are given a molecule? Then how are you going to calculate the molar mass of molecules? So, now we are going to calculate the molar masses of molar mass of following. 
you have to tell me the molar mass of the following okay the first is h2o the second is let us say co2 third is nh4 okay so now let's see how are we going to calculate the molar mass of these for my dear students if you have to calculate the molar mass of h2o so what will you do the molar mass of h2o will be equal to the molar mass of oxygen plus you have two hydrogen then the molar mass of hydrogen into two so the molar mass of oxygen is 16 plus you have two hydrogens and two into the molar mass of one hydrogen is one so ma'am one this is equal to 16 plus two which is equal to 18 grams per mole so the molar mass of h2o is 18 grams per mole this is how you will calculate the molar masses of your molecules let us calculate for co2 the molar mass of carbon is 12 grams per mole so 12 plus my dear students molar mass of one oxygen is 16 and you have two oxygen so you will write 16 into 2 which is equal to 16 to 32 plus 12 which is equal to 44 grams per mole so you've calculated the molar mass of co2 now let's calculate the molar mass of nh4 this will be nitrogen 14 plus 4 into 1 1 for hydrogen and you have four hydrogens this will be 14 plus 4 which is equal to 18 grams per mole so this is how this is how you will calculate the molar masses of the following right yes it would be better if you write it as nh3 you will be confused so write it nh3 okay this will be 3 into 1 which is 3 and this would be 17 17 grams per mole okay perfect so this is how you are going to calculate the molar masses of molecules this is how you are going to calculate the molar mass of the following and i hope you will be very clear we will solve the questions and you will understand everything okay so this is how we will calculate moles in terms of masses we have discussed about moles in terms of numbers we have discussed about moles in terms of masses now we are going to calculate moles in terms of volumes so the other part would be moles in terms of volume okay so now you're going to talk about the moles in terms of volume my dear students what is uh, how are we going to calculate the moles in terms of volume first and the most important thing which you need to know is again my dear students you have to write it as a note only applicable for gases also only applicable only applicable at stp conditions that is one atmosphere one stp conditions is what is stp conditions standard temperature and pressure conditions okay so if you if you'll on you'll only be given the stp conditions you don't need to remember the uh, what are stp conditions for a uh, mole concept okay yes so i hope this is clear with you that you can calculate moles in terms of volume only for gases and only and only for those gases which are at stp conditions okay so now what i want to tell you is that one mole one mole of any gas one mole of any gas it could be any gas it could be n2 gas it could be co2 gas it could be no2 gas one mole of any gas occupies occupies 22.4 liter volume at stp conditions so what does this mean that if you have any gas any gas present at stp condition and it has one mole then it will definitely occupy 22.4 liters of volume be it any gas okay so it doesn't matter which gas we are talking about perfect so from here we can determine the formula for number of moles of gases what is the formula for number of moles of gases in terms of volume whatever the volume is given volume of the gases whatever the volume given volume given volume of gas okay in liter divided by divided by 
22.4 liters which is your reference value so 22.4 liters this is how you are going to calculate moles in terms of volume but you can only calculate moles in terms of volume for gases you have to memorize it and only those gases which are present at stp conditions okay i hope this is clear now let's take an example and understand the complete concept let us say i have i tell you that you have you have two moles of two moles of co2 gas and three moles of no gas at stp conditions at stp calculate calculate total volume of gases calculate total volume of gases okay this is the question try to do this question yourself and then ma'am will help you out obviously so now my dear students what does this mean i know that the gases are at stp condition i know that at stp i know that at stp one mole gas occupies 22.4 liter volume it occupies 22.4 liter volume be it any gas i have two moles of co2 gas so the volume of co2 would be i know that for co2 let's calculate for co2 what would be for co2 ma'am i know that one mole of gas occupies 22.4 liters then two moles of co2 gas will occupy two moles of co2 will have two into 22.4 liters which is equal to 44.8 liters volume right this is the volume of co2 now let's calculate for no so now for no i know that again beat any gas one mole of gas occupies 22.4 liters of volume i have three moles of this gas so three moles of no will have 3 into 22.4 which is equal to 4 3 12 so this will be 2 1 3 2 6 7 and this would be 3 to 6 67.2 liters of volume please check the calculation it could be wrong okay so this is how you will calculate both volumes and you are asked total volume so the total volume of gases will be uh, 44.8 plus 67.2 2 liters just add them and you will get the total volume so this is how you will be actually calculating but if you are given if you are given you have 22 liters if you are given you are given 22.4 liters uh, volume of h2o you know that water is liquid state liquid state cannot be calculated by this formula this formula is only and only applicable to gases just mind it okay now let's move forward my dear students from here what have we learnt let's just summarize all the things about mole because this is what we are going to use again and again okay so now we calculated that you can calculate mole in three different forms you can calculate mole in three different forms the first form is in terms of number of particles so when you are talking about in terms of number of particles moles is equal to given number divided by Avogadro numbers this is the formula this is the formula my dear students I hope this is clear if you talk about the mole in terms of mass in terms of mass what will be the formula the formula would be moles is equal to given mass divided by molar mass of whatever the atom element or molecule is given the next is in terms of in terms of volume right there are two conditions for this there are two conditions for this you have to write those conditions as well the conditions are applicable only for gases and at stp conditions at stp conditions if you are going to calculate the moles then that would be equal to given volume of gas in liters divided by 
liters this is how you can calculate moles now what i want to tell you is that you can calculate moles in this form right and you might be asked to calculate the mass then you, these moles are actually equal for one particular thing okay let's take an example we'll start the solutions chapters concentration terms in the next class now right now you will understand this mole concept because this is the most important part for you right now what are we going to discuss now is that if you talk about if i tell you that you calculate let let me give you a question okay calculate mass of 44.8 liters of co2 gas at stp so this is the question first try the question yourself and then ma'am is here ma'am will definitely help you out okay so the now so now the question says that you have to calculate the mass of 44.8 liters of co2 how can i calculate first i have to calculate the moles i know that volume of the gas is given at stp condition i can calculate its moles okay so i know that one mole of gas at stp conditions occupies 22.4 liters of volume i have 44.8 liters of volume so i can calculate the moles as given volume divided by 22.4 which is 44.8 divided by 22.4 which is equal to 2 so you have two moles of co2 gas you can write that i have two moles of CO two. Now, if you have two moles of CO two, you know that you know that we know we know one mole CO two molar mass is forty four grams. per mole i hope i told you that the molar mass of co2 is 44 grams per mole 12 for uh, carbon 16 for oxygen into 2 because we have two oxygen so this is the molar mass right now if one mole of co2 has 44 grams of mass then two moles of co2 will have 2 into 20, 44 right yes then two moles co2 will have mass equal to 44 into 2 which is 88 grams of mass so this is how you can interuse the moles you can calculate from one form and then you can use it in the other form as well so this is how you are going to tackle the questions i hope you are crystal clear with this concept my dear students just write this and then we will move forward okay write this and then we'll move forward i hope you've written this now let's move forward my dear students we can actually discuss we can actually discuss the concentration terms as well we have a little time so now let's move to the concentration terms what is concentration let's uh, let's understand this what are concentration terms actually okay so uh, let's take a very genuine example let's take the example of this person right i am telling you that i am telling you that his height is 6 feet okay height is 6 feet if i say it is 180 cm will it be fine yes ma'am it will be fine if i say that this is 1.8 cm will it be fine yes ma'am this will be fine so if i am if i am telling his height in different different units is his height changing no ma'am he is the same person you are just measuring his height in a in different units and that is the reason you are getting different values here i'm getting 6 here i'm getting 180 here i'm getting 1.8 right but has the person changed no has the person's height changed no it is same so my dear students concentration terms are exactly like the height calculations when you talk about concentration actually what does concentration tells you it tells you that in what particular amount of solute in what particular amount of solvent have you dissolved a particular amount of a solute right now you can express it in different terms that how much grams of solute is dissolved in how much grams of solvent you can say how much grams of solute is dissolved in how many liters of solvent right yes so in this way in this way unit changes in this way unit changes just like these units changed so the numerical value will change but will the concentration of the solution change no the concentration will remain same 
and that is how you define the concentration terms concentration terms are nothing but a different way of telling you that how much solute is dissolved and how much solvent right yes let's let's understand it even better let us say you have a container you have a container and you have let's say 5 liters of you have 5 liters of water here okay now you have added you have added 2 moles of naoh NaOH. Let me tell you the molar mass of NaOH is equal to sodium molar mass is 23, oxygen is 16 and hydrogen is 1. So, this is 4 is 0 and this is 40 grams per mole. Okay. So, if it is 2 moles, if 1 mole weighs 40 grams, then 2 mole weighs 80 grams. Right? Yes. So, what can you say? You can say that, you can say that you can define it in different ways. You can say that 2 moles of NaOH are dissolved in 5 liters of volume, uh, 5 liters of solvent, right? The other way you can define it as, you can say that 80 grams of NaOH is actually dissolved in 5 liters of, uh, 5 liters of solvent. So, what did you do? You just changed the units right but have you changed the solution no the amount of solute is exactly the same in the solution but you are just expressing it in different ways and that is what is known as concentration terms where you just express the concentration in different ways in different ways this is what is concentration terms right yes so we are going to study a, a lot of amount of num uh, Different different concentration terms like we'll be discussing molarity. We'll be discussing molarity. We'll be discussing molality. We'll be discussing uh, mole fraction. We'll be discussing we'll be discussing percentage compositions. We will be discussing percentage compositions. We will also be discussing uh, PPB. PPB, we would be discussing PPM. These are different types of concentration terms which we are going to study. Right, yes. We will be studying each one by one and we will be solving questions. So, don't worry. Today, we are just going to discuss one concentration term which is your molarity. First, we will write concentration. Yeah, I, I have explained you what is concentration. I hope you don't have a doubt in that. So, we can move forward. The first concentration term which we are going to study today is molarity. What is molarity? Molarity actually tells you that how many moles of your solute are actually dissolved in 1 liter of your solution. So, the basic definition of molarity is moles of solute dissolved moles of solute dissolved in 1 liter of solution in 1 liter of solution moles of solute dissolved in 1 liter of solution i hope this is clear yes now let's understand what does this mean first we'll write the formula for molarity the formula for molarity actually comes to be moles of solute Moles of solute divided by volume of solution, divided by volume of solution in liters, volume of solution in liters. So, this is the basic formula, this is the basic formula for molarity. What does this tell you? This tells you that how many moles of solute are actually dissolved in 1 liter of your solution okay so now now let's take examples now let's take examples let us say i told you let us say i told you that you have a five molar aqueous solution of naoh ma'am told you that you have five molar aqueous naoh solution so what information can you derive from this particular thing the most important thing is that you can say we have studied before as well that ma'am this tells me that it is a binary solution it is a binary solution solute is NaOH and ma'am this aqueous words tells me that solvent is water right 
yes perfect these are the informations which you could derive initially without this particular part now what does this five molar tells you this tells you that you have five moles of solute what is your solute naoh so five moles of naoh in one liter of your solution in one liter of your solution this is the information given to you this is the information given to you by five molar aqueous NaOH solution that you have five moles of your solute solute is your NaOH dissolved in one liter of solution now my dear students the other thing which you need to know is that a solution a solution actually comprise of your solute plus solvent right a solution actually comprised of your solute plus your solvent right yes i hope the thing is clear till here okay now let's move forward i'll give you one more example because it will be not be clear if i'll not give you another example let us say you have two molar aqueous h2so4 solution so what does this mean it is a binary solution i can infer that it is a binary solution i can infer that solute is h2so4 i can infer that solvent is water because aqueous word is there and i can say that i have two moles of solute the solute is h2so4 present in one liter of solution one liter of solution right yes so this is how you are going to infer things from the this particular term okay now my dear students the next other thing which you need to know is that if you talk about mass of solution if you ever talk about the mass of solution this will always be equal to the mass of solute plus mass of solvent plus mass of mass of solvent always and always okay i hope this is clear with you because all these things are, we are going to use in our numericals that is the reason i'm telling you these okay now let's move forward my dear students you can write it i'll uh, move aside i hope you've written it i hope you've written this as well now let's solve a question and understand the concept now let's solve a question and understand the concept what does the question say the question says that you have four grams of naoh so first in the most okay uh, just one thing my dear students just one thing and then we'll move forward i told you the molarities formula as uh, I, I i have given you the formula of molarity yes i told you that you have moles of solute upon you have mass of uh, volume of solution in liters right yes you can modify this formula if you will uh, see your books you will see this formula as well we know that moles of solute is actually equal to mass of solute which is given divided by molar mass of solute right yes so first let's write all these things and then we can write the formula if i put these things in this formula i can say that molarity is equal to moles of solute is mass of solute divided by molar mass of solute right divided by if you are given the volume of solution in milliliters generally you will be given volume of solution in milliliters then you will have to convert it into liters so you will have to divide it by thousand so the perfect formula for molarity would come out to be as mass of solute upon molar mass of solute into volume of solution in milliliters divided by thousand you'll come across this formula a lot of times okay i'll just tell you what each and everything denotes here my dear students w of solute actually gives you the mass of solute given in grams this is the given mass of solute which will be given to you in the question what does mm of solute denote this denotes that you have molar mass molar mass of your solute in grams per mole right 
yes if you talk about the volume of solution here so the volume of solution here denotes that it is the volume of solution in milliliters right yes and this whole gives you the formula of molarity i don't want you to memorize this formula that is the reason i forgot to tell you this formula but yes there are a lot of students who like to you know memorize the formula so here is the formula for you i would say don't memorize the formula just remember that it is moles of solute upon volume of solution and you can derive it from anywhere you know how to calculate moles just calculate the moles and put it into it right yes now let's move forward now you can do the question okay so now try the question you can use the formula or you can solve directly so what i see here is that 4 grams of NaOH is dissolved in 250 ml of water so i am given here my solute is NaOH and my solvent is water first and the most important thing which we i have derived is this next I can calculate moles of solute as given mass of solute which is NaOH divided by molar mass of NaOH. Right? Yes. Perfect. No issues. Now my dear students. You are given the mass of NaOH equal to 4 grams. So this is 4 grams. I know that molar mass of NaOH is Tell me, the molar mass of sodium is 23 grams per mole. You need to memorize these. Plus, oxygen molar mass is 16. Plus, hydrogen molar mass is 1. So, this will be equal to 40 grams per mole. Yeah? Yes, ma'am. So, from here, we can put these values into this formula. We can put these values in this formula. So, moles of NaOH will be equal to given mass which is 4 divided by molar mass which is 40 which is equal to 1 upon 10. So, the moles of NaOH came out to be 10, 1 upon 10. I need to calculate the molarity. See, neglecting the volume change on mixing, calculate the molarity of the solution. So, now my dear students, what does neglecting the volume change means? See, I'll tell you this, uh, you will come across this line a lot of times. Uh, you have water, water is your sol solvent, Let, uh, let's talk about the sugar solution and you have sugar as your solute. Now, my dear students, let's say you have 500 ml of water and you mixed sugar into it, right? Yes. Now, when you mixed the sugar, there was a little change in volume. The volume might have increased a little bit from 500, but the change was so minor that we could neglect it and we said that the volume of the solution is actually equal to the volume of a solvent, which was water. Right? Yes. So, this line actually tells you that whenever this line is written or if not written only, you can deduce that the volume of the solution is actually equal to the volume of liquid or solvent until and unless it is mentioned that the volume is not same okay so this you have to infer on your own here it is telling us that so we can say that this line tells us that volume of solvent is actually equal to the volume of solution the volume of solution so i can say that volume of h2o will be equal to volume of solution which is equal to 250 ml right Yes, now we have to calculate the molarity. I know that molarity is given as moles of NaOH because NaOH is my solute upon volume of solution in liters, right? See, moles of NaOH are 1 upon 10. So, I'll put 1 upon 10 divided by volume of solution in liters. I have volume of solution in milliliters. I can convert it in liters by dividing it by 1000, right? Let's just solve it. This would be 1 upon 10 into 1000 upon 250. This would be 1, 4, which would be 0 0.4 molar. This is uh, 0 0.4 molar, right? Yes, so the molarity of the solution is 0 0.4 molar. This is how you're going to solve this question. Also, you can solve this question by the formula as well. But I don't uh, want my students to, uh, you know, mug up the formulas. Try the questions yourself. Try your concepts which you have studied with me and apply them. And don't memorize the formulas, okay? Let's move forward. What do we have? 
yeah you have another question you have the question as what mass of NaOH is to be taken to prepare 0.2 molar 500 ml solution so let's try this question let's try this question and then we'll end the session today okay yeah so what does this question say that you what mass of NaOH you have to tell the mass of NaOH here to prepare you are given molarity which is 0.2 molar and you are given volume of solution how much 500 ml i know i know that molarity is actually equal to moles of solute here solute is NUH upon volume of solution in liters see molarity is given as 0.2 moles of solute i don't know so i'll write moles of NUH divided by volume of solution you are given volume of solution in milliliters you have to convert it into liters because you want volume in liters so divided by 1000 right yes this will be 0 0.2 is equal to 1 2 this would be moles of NaOH into 2 right so from here you can say that moles of NaOH is actually equal to 0 0.1 so you have calculated the moles of NUH but you don't want moles of NUH you need mass of NUH but my dear students when we studied moles calculation in terms of mass we said that moles of NUH will be equal to given mass of NUH upon molar mass of NUH right we said this yes ma'am so my dear students we know moles which is 0 0.1 we have we can calculate the mass of NUH if we know the molar mass of NUH how can we calculate the molar mass of NUH molar mass of NUH can be calculated as molar mass of sodium is 23 oxygen is 16 hydrogen is 1 this will be 40 grams per mole right yes so I know the molar mass as well so I'll put it here I'll put it here. So, the mass of NaOH came out to be 4 grams. So, this is how you are going to solve the question. It was so easy. Right? Yes. So, this is how concentration terms questions are asked. These were very easy. We'll also try the tricky questions as well. But always start from the basic level and then we'll have to move forward. Right? Yes. So, this is what we are going to study about concentration terms. So, can I give you this question as your homework? This is your homework question. Try this question on your own. Try this question on your own. Okay. It is exact. It is using the same concept that I have just told you. You can also do this question. Okay. This question I will teach you. You have to do only this question. This is your homework question. We will uh, take forward from the next slide in the next session. Okay. Okay my dear students. With this, we can end our session. I'll not uh, take a very long session today because this is your first class and I want you to be happy. Right? Yes. So, uh, I am. I really enjoyed teaching you uh, this particular part. Do let me know uh, what was your experience and uh, do let me know the homework questions answer in the comment section. I actually read all your comments. Right? Yes. And uh, interact with me with your comments because we are not in a live uh, class. So, I cannot interact like this. But do let me know everything what you feel how you uh, what was your experience in the first class in the comments so that i can make the uh, needed changes and uh, till then my dear students keep studying we'll meet in the next session all the very best bye bye take care